Obviously on the ground there have been some measurements, but when you measure that on the ground, you can only measure a few single trees. Mm -hmm. So what we actually want to look at, and that's currently what we're starting to look into, is have LiDAR data, and we have that for Litchfield for a large area. And the LiDAR data provides us detailed information about trees, tree height, crown size, and things like that. Um, and we obviously have fire history. Now we can indirectly sort of infer intensity from the timing within the year. That's what's currently being done. But we also have now a measure where we can estimate um, fire um, severity and also sort of patchiness, which is linked to severity as well. So we'd, that's what we'd be doing this year and, and next year to, to link the structural information we get from the LiDAR with the fire information that we have from MODIS, for example, and Landsat, and try to establish that link, what dif different fire regimes, how do they influence the woody component. You can, but spectrally, they don't differ much because the temperature of a fire doesn't differ much. I mean, if you look at, at flames of a bushfire, they're orange. No, they, aren't, they aren't flame. Post-fire, post post well, it's, it's always indirectly. A typical ground measure of um, intensity is um, scorch height. And there are some relations that people have established that scorch height is six times the flame height, and sort of flame height is, is sort of a measure of intensity. Well, the severity measure sort of can give you an indirect measure, but you, you can't directly measure scorch height. And it's actually really difficult to measure in the field as well. Because you have to have plants that had leaves in, within that height range. Um, you can't look at the stems themselves because flames, they travel up the stems and therefore give you a, a completely wrong picture. It's not a simple thing. It's not straightforward. It's not like measuring the distance of your camera <laughs> from the wall. But so there are a lot of interesting topics still there for students to look at. Well, what, what often is a problem is, is the difference in scale. I do a lot with MODIS because we get observations every day. And as you know, the uh, vegetation is quite dynamic here. Even if, uh, if a fire has gone through a few weeks later, well, in some cases a few days later, you get some plants re-sprouting yeah. already. Um, that's why I think MODIS is, is a really good sensor but the best pixel size you can get out of MODIS is 250 meter. That's a completely different view from what you get on the ground. I mean, usually in the field, you often can see it maybe 50 meter or so. And so that scale difference is, is a big issue. And therefore, when we develop new methodologies, we try to go into areas that are very homogeneous. So our really point view that we get on the ground is sort of representative of a much larger area. And that's why we set up um, that super site in Litchfield, because it's a large area, um, 20, 30 square kilometers, that's relatively homogeneous. And so that's Friday's field trip, we go into that area. To that one, we haven't, but we have to, to apply fire this year to protect our infrastructure. So we do that at, at other sites as well. I've got some automatic cameras sitting out there that monitor the canopy and the understory, take a photo every half hour. And I was actually on leave during that time and I did get a notification via email through the NAFI system that there are fires in that area. And I was sitting there just praying that my cameras have survived. And so when I came back, I went out there. I've got some leaf traps there as well. So first leaf trap, burned, second leaf trap, burned. Then third leaf trap, oh, survived. And then I had some hopes for my cameras and I've been lucky they survived because the fire got there in the evening. And I've, the last shot that the camera took on that day was just with the fire front approaching. So that, that was very lucky. I mean, obviously I cleared the fuel a bit, but during the day, if it's very intense, that fire was in July. So it was reasonably intense. I've just been lucky that 
the camera is alive. Uh, MODIS is being used for active fire and burned area mapping, so post fire. AVHR is still being used for active fire, mostly. Um, AVHR is still being used for um, national burned area mapping. So that's one kilometer resolution. And because of the quality of the sensor, that's purely manual mapping. And you can ask Miguel, because when he was working in Perth with me, he was doing some manual mapping with AVHR, and it's not a very exciting job. <laughs> but the quality of the sensor just doesn't allow to automate that fully. With MODIS, for NAFI, there's still a semi-manual process for the burned area mapping. Um, for Northern Australia, but I've got a fully automatic process running as well, which with every overpass, it updates the burned area map. And that's where we can actually create nice animations where you can see how fires are progressing through the landscape. Um, so I guess, well, with new sensors, like the European, I think it's Sentinel tool that they will be launching probably next year. The intention is to have a two sensor system and they will provide Landsat-like resolution every four days. So there's potential to take that automatic modus mapping to Landsat resolution. But you're dealing then with huge data sets. Well, NAFI, the website, yeah. includes information on, on well, wind speed and direction. The problem is at a, that has to rely on, on meteorological stations on the ground. And up here, there aren't too many. So if you might have 300 kilometers without any, any med station on the ground. Um, and that is a bit of an issue. Um, what we do to overcome that is usually we also provide people, not just the mapped areas, we provide them with a true color image of the area where you can see the smoke. And the smoke is a good indication of, of wind direction. And that's actually quite helpful for, for fire managers as well. But it, it means, yeah, they sort of have to have a better understanding about what they're doing. They're not just looking at a map. They sort of have to turn on an image, um, have to understand that that has been taken at a certain time. Um, and then with the smoke plumes, you can look at it. Although it's not always very easy. I remember when I worked in Perth, there was a big fire in the Perth Hills, which produced a lot of smoke. And that smoke plume went out to the ocean and turned back. And then, hmm, what happened there? The thing is, in the morning, the wind was blowing outwards. And then the sea breeze kicked in and was blowing the smoke back. So it's, it's not easy to interpret the smoke if, if the wind direction changes.